Module 1, Challenges of Educating Low-Income Students. Welcome to Module 1 of the Reading Essentials course. This module will introduce the challenges of educating all children in low-income schools. Hundreds of reports from governments and donor agencies document the increased enrollments in the lowest-income countries, and they also document the frustrations and disappointments of seeing a large percentage of those students fail to learn and drop out illiterate. What are the underlying factors to these problems? Can some be mitigated through better literacy instruction? By the end of this module, you will be able to discuss the effects of low levels of learning in low-income settings and identify factors that contribute to poor reading performance. How big is the challenge for all children to read? School brings to all of us personal memories, so it may be easy to assume that public schools in poor countries function like the ones we know. We may assume all children are relatively healthy and well-fed, have textbooks, reading books, a teacher who will show up every day and interact with everyone. Nearly all children who go to school in high-income countries learn how to read. Most of us have no memory of classmates dropping out illiterate. Make a guess. About what percentage of students overall drop out before finishing primary school in sub-Saharan Africa? 10? 33? 67? 89? What percentage of students graduate illiterate in some sub-Saharan countries? 10, 22, 67, 75. About 67 percent of students drop out before finishing primary school in sub-Saharan Africa. About 22 percent of students graduate illiterate in some sub-Saharan countries. A graph from a 2012 UNESCO Global Monitoring Report, GMR, shows rapid progress in getting kids into school between 1999 and around 2004. Opening access has been effective and enrollments in the lowest income countries increased. However, since about 2004, enrollment progress has slowed down and almost come to a standstill. Even when students manage to continue going to school, only the most gifted or the well-to-do will manage to learn. Many of those who stay on and graduate remain illiterate. Data shows that a large percentage of enrolled students fail to learn and drop out illiterate. In sub-Saharan Africa, about one-third drop out early and may learn very little before doing so. About 67 million children are out of school, and 200 more million may be in school but not learning. Overall, only 33% of children in these countries are meeting minimum curricular requirements. So would you send your child to school if they had a 50% chance of learning nothing? Even when students manage to continue going to school, only the most gifted or the well-to-do will manage to learn. Many of those who stay on and graduate remain illiterate. This graph shows that only 75% of adults from Rwanda, Mozambique, the Gambia, and Mali reported an ability to read without difficulties after six years of school. And since this is self-reported literacy, reality could be worse. International assessments show that learning deficits in the early years accumulate and low performers cannot catch up on their own. The median child in low-income countries performs only around the fifth percentile of children in OECD countries. This graph shows the percentage of students reading zero words per minute in the early grade reading assessment. 25 to 75 percent of students from grades 2 to 4 in various low-income countries could not read a single word. Many even lack knowledge of letters. Take, for example, the Gambia. The early grade reading assessment was given in English in the Gambia in 2007 and 2009. 
Seventy to eighty percent of second graders could not read one single word. Predictably, reading comprehension scores are very low. Only about twenty-four percent of students in grade two could read and understand a simple paragraph. The following section will discuss some important reasons why students learn little in school. Many children come to school with health and nutritional problems, malaria, malnutrition, intestinal parasites, anemia. These result in school days lost. They may affect attention span, consolidation, and overall result in lower ability to learn. Some students have visual problems and cannot see the blackboard from afar or hear the teacher. This graph illustrates the impact of ill health in education outcomes. Significant percentages of students suffer from worms, stunting, anemia. Three to six IQ points may be lost as a consequence. Each case results in one or two years of lost schooling, and worldwide, the lost schooling years amount to millions. The poorer students enter grade one without having seen a book. They often do not have educated people at home, so they may have to learn reading or other subjects without help or corrective feedback. Some may miss classes often and fall behind. In low-income countries, there may be one textbook for every three to four students, if any at all. Without books, students can only see letters in blackboards, and without many hours of practice, they cannot increase their reading speed. Textbooks may be written in unknown languages, or the vocabulary may be pitched at the middle class. Thus, the books may be incomprehensible. Many countries are multilingual and may use certain European languages for instruction, notably English, French, or Portuguese. The first two, in particular, have complex spelling systems. Students enter school without knowing these languages, and they must learn a language and a complex reading system at the same time. To overcome the barriers of poverty, poor children require more hours of quality instruction, but may get fewer. Without textbooks, many spend their day copying incomprehensible texts. In this picture, for example, very few students can see what is on the blackboard, so they get little real instruction or practice. Teachers' performance often creates obstacles for the poor. They are often absent and rarely supervised. Many have limited education and get no training on how to teach reading. They may be political appointees and not accountable to parents. They may resort to teaching the few students who can perform the tasks and neglect others. Overall, multiple factors and their combinations are responsible for limited learning in low-income countries. Students have health problems. They get few textbooks. Have poorly educated or trained teachers. And are given complex methods for learning basic skills. Under the Education for All initiative, all students are expected to learn. How do we help nearly all students learn basic skills under conditions of limited opportunity? This is what cognitive science can offer. It is important to focus on the variables that matter the most for learning and design instruction accordingly. Many other variables are important. But they may not be realistically modifiable in school. Which variables can be realistically modified at school? Malnutrition, literacy of relatives at home, teaching method, classroom resources, books, child's prior knowledge, poverty, amount of print in environment, use of a language a child knows. Much is written about the many variables impacting the performance of the very poor, but which ones can governments mitigate with policies? Which ones can be improved at the school level? These are the ones to focus on. The next modules will focus on the actionable variables.